On October 14th of 2022, the U.S. Geological Survey stated that a new intrusion of magma at a depth of as little as 2 miles or 3 kilometers was present underneath Mauna Loa's summit. This input of shallow magma occurred during the last two weeks of September, leading to the volcano's most energetic earthquake swarm of the 21st century. Thus, when a moderate magnitude earthquake occurred in the early morning hours of the same day, many people attribute it to Mauna Loa. The earthquake in question was a magnitude 4.6 and struck at 9.07 am local time south of the city of Pahala. Then, a mere 24 seconds later, an even larger earthquake struck the same area, registering in as a magnitude 5.0. What had just occurred was two suspicious earthquakes on a section of the southeastern Mauna Loa volcano on what is known as a decolment fault. According to scientific research, a magnitude 6.0 or larger earthquake on this fault is quite likely to precede a volcanic eruption from Mauna Loa. For context, Mauna Loa is the second tallest active volcano on the big island of Hawaii and exists due to the underlying Hawaiian hotspot. Mauna Loa covers 51% of the landmass of the big island as shown here. This volcano is currently undergoing its longest period without an eruption in the last 200 years as it has not erupted since 1984 and in the last 3,000 years has erupted about once every 6 years. Yet, since early July of 2019, Mauna Loa has been at a yellow alert level due to persistent volcanic activity including earthquakes. When earthquakes occur on or around the flanks of Mauna Loa, they occur for one of three reasons. The first type of earthquake is volcano tectonic, which can either occur due to the movement of magma or due to pressure exerted on distant faults due to often associated volcanic uplift and overall increases in rock strain. These types of earthquakes most often occur right below Mauna Loa's summit at a depth of less than 4 miles. The second type of earthquake is flexural and occurred due to the fact that the Earth's crust is floating on the mantle. The thicker the crust is, the more it sinks into the planet's interior. Since the Big Island has been increasing its mass and thickness through volcanic eruptions, it is subsiding at a rate of approximately 1 inch a year. This causes extensional and compressional stress which can then generate large magnitude earthquakes at a depth of greater than 12 miles. However, the two earthquakes which struck on October 14th occurred along or adjacent to a major fault line which runs between the oceanic crust and the overlying volcanic edifice. This edifice occasionally moves due to gravity and has historically produced the island's largest earthquakes such as a magnitude 7.9 quake in 1868. Known as decolment quakes, these generally occur at a depth of 4 to 6 miles. Although the two quakes were decolment related, they both probably had insufficient magnitude to trigger a volcanic eruption and did not occur in an ideal spot to trigger an eruption due to their distance from Mauna Loa's magma chamber. In the immediate aftermath of these earthquakes, the U.S. Geological Survey did not notice any major changes in gas emissions, ground deformation, or other factors, indicating that at least for now, an eruption is not imminent. However, Mauna Loa has the potential to only produce signs that it will erupt a few hours beforehand. With this being said, I noticed another potential minor change in tilt meter sensors at Mauna Loa on October 14th. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Mining and Gover Geology for supporting this channel.